Today we are beginning with Padmini Rangamani, professor at the Department of Mechanical and Aerospace Engineering at UC San Diego. She'll be giving a talk on Monday entitled Elucidating the Role of Membrane Tension and Cellular Processes Using Continuum Modeling. Go ahead and tell us a little bit about your research. Um, I want to know why the curvature of a membrane is an interesting thing to study. So if you think about cells and how they respond to a lot of the external environment and also the changes that happen within them, they change their shape. And one of the most obvious things that you can think about when cells change their shape is how they change their membrane curvature. It's, there has been so many experimental observations on how cells change their curvature. And what we do in my group is think about it using mechanics. You're thinking about the forces exerted, the stresses, and how those may play a role, along with all the chemical and the genetic processes involved in um, the changing the shape of the cell. And I think it's a very fundamental biological process involved in both physiology and pathology. Wonderful. And what might be one of the practical uses of this uh, area of study? So the way we study uh, changes to cell curvature is thinking about uh, what are the forces exerted, as I mentioned, and that helps us take a lot of the molecular details that many people may be studying in terms of the particular proteins, in terms of the particular protein sequences, and um, domains and thinking about, okay, what are the general principles? You know, what is the physics involved in, and you know, we are at Biophysical Society meetings, so we do like to think a lot about the physics involved and what these uh, shape changes might look like. So it helps us put together a lot of the details in a bigger picture. I know we were speaking earlier, but tell me a little bit about your background. I know that it's quite varied in terms of your education. Yeah, so the way I would like to describe it is a little bit of jack of all trades, if you will. And um, I have my background is both in chemical engineering, my bachelor's and my master's, and my PhD is in biological sciences from a med school. So it's a very um, mixed background, and I mostly got extremely fortunate that I could build a scientific career without necessarily following a traditional path of, you know, one major throughout my training. Um, the advantage of that is then you kind of get to like know more details about a lot of things and um, it has helped me really build a lot of experimental collaborations even though I'm a theoretician myself and uh, it helps the communication between different groups of uh, fee uh, different subgroups in the field uh, easier, definitely. Yeah. And what would you recommend to a young person who was maybe beginning their uh, path in academia or science in terms of what to study or how to approach? A lot of uh, how uh, these things work is a good combination of, um, you know, being at the right place at the right time, good mentorship in sometimes luck, but I think in terms of picking problems, if someone were coming from a modeling perspective, uh, I would essentially ask what my postdoctoral mentor said we should ask, you know, is there any experimental evidence for the question you're studying? If mm. without experimental evidence, is it an exercise in thinking about uh, the mathematical details or can you build more strength into it by finding experimental evidence? So I would say that if you can ground your question, in the experiments, mm. and that's why meetings like this are great, then maybe you have a sense of where the field is going. Well, it's been such a pleasure to speak with you. I can't wait to hear your talk, and I hope you have a wonderful time here. Thank you so much. Thank you for uh, taking the time to speak with me.